What I suggest is have a great quality product and the icing on the cake per se is the THC infusion. Hey podcast listener, this is the THC Foodie, where you can get the scoop on the business of THC infused foods. If you'd like to learn more about what we do, check out the THCfoodie.com and IceCreamPrivateLabel.com. How important really is product packaging as it relates to your product sales? And what should you be considering when you're choosing the size and style of your product packaging? Today, we're going to be talking about how your customer dictates the size and style of your packaging and how crucial that is to the placement and sale of your product. Package size. (laughs) Yeah, what size is your package, okay? Is the right package size really that important? But really, is it really that important Um, when you're creating a consumable product, in particular ice cream? Why is package size so important? Package size is a direct correlation to who your customer is. So it's important that When you get in to the ice cream, gelato, sorbet, you want to know who your customer is. If you want to target a retail customer, then your decision is going to be pint, quart, half gallon. It could be a little smaller, but that is not really designed for the sales in the smaller size, like eight ounce cup doesn't do as well when you're in a higher, like a super premium category. It's important because when you're coming up with the flavors that you are going to be making, it's as important to know the size because then that targets the the customer that you're going after. If you have the wrong size, the sales may not be there and you may think it's the flavor, but it's really the size. An example of that would be you have chocolate ice cream and a quart and it's retailing for $8. Seven ninety nine, and then down the case is pints of chocolate, similar in category, uh, for about three bucks less. So chances are, unless they know the consumer knows the name, they're going to grab the smaller price point. The suggestion is is that if that chocolate ice cream you were making was in a pint, then it's a toss up, and then they really compare the labels. They might feel the weight difference, and they might say, "I'm going to take a shot at this new product. It's local. They have a couple things." in it that I like. I like the I like the look of it. The package size is important. If you're going to a sports venue, then chances are that those are eight ounce cups. If you're going to a nursing home, those tend to be four ounce cups. If you're going to a scoop shop, those are bulk cans. They could be anywhere from two and a half gallons to three gallons and you're scooping. So it's going to be very important about if you're selling in gourmet stores, if you're selling at a convenience store, a grocery store, um, a you know, a health store, all of these sizes are important. I never thought about the fact that the package size correlates to your customer, but that totally makes sense. I've seen in the grocery store here, Haagen-Dazs has come out with a tiny size. It's like maybe four ounces, I'm thinking, and I buy it. It's like 99 cents, I think. Um, and when you think about it, that's absurd because for $3, I can buy an entire half gallon, but I don't want a half gallon. I just want a little cup and then I share it with my baby, you know? Um, does that work because it's Haagen-Dazs and it's a recognized brand? Or can somebody who's new in the market come into the market with a small, tiny little size like that and get away with it? You know, the smaller you go, the price goes up. So the smaller you go, the more of a commodity it is. That haagen cup is like 3.6 ounces, actually. What was interesting about that is that previous to Ben and & Jerry's and haagen coming out with that small cup, it's a poly-coated cup, and it's like you said, it's their single serve. You're their perfect customer. It's a non-threatening cost of 99 cents. Even if it was a buck 29, I'm sure you would have purchased it because you're not going to, purpose of this is to lift the lid, eat the entire portion and throw the cup away. That's the design there. So people are, they're going to say, okay, this is like getting a scoop of ice cream. And at 99 cents is pretty inexpensive anymore when the average, you know, four ounce scoop is probably about a buck and a quarter, buck and a half 
um, depending on if it's an economy grade or not. But the point is, is that they came out with it because prior to that, there is an economy cup. It's a plastic fluted cup with an economy grade ice cream and sherbet. And there's probably eight in a bag. And then they sell the whole bag for like three bucks. So the family was grabbed in these, this bag of cups and then they were, and then everybody could eat what they wanted at different times. So Hagenas came out with this because they said two things. One, um, it could be a quick snack for our kid. Um, it's great for the convenience stores. We can throw it in a, in a little freezer box. Somebody's, you know, grabbing a soda. They can grab this little cup because a pint's too much. However, it's commodity. In order to be at 99 cents, to answer your question about somebody starting in this business and getting into 3.6 ounces, they're not going to be at 99 cents. That cup alone is going to probably be about 7 cents, 8 cents. So the reason that Haagen-Dazs and Ben & Jerry's can be so competitive is they run one flavor for 24 hours or 18 hours or 12 hours. They do not let it stop. So everything becomes fractional. So if Startup was making it and they were making a couple hundred cups, they'd probably be at a cost of maybe a buck and a quarter, maybe a buck five, just in cost. They haven't distributed it yet and the store hasn't made their margin yet. So it's clearly an item for people that have a name out there. They already have a customer that's buying their product and now we're going to put it in this smaller cup strictly from a convenience perspective. Transferring this conversation into the consumables arena, would it make sense to have tiny little serving sizes that are THC infused ice cream? This is this is a conversation I've had with clients, and it depends on what state you're in. Now, my understanding in California, there's somebody that's able to scoop out of a tub. I'm getting verified on that, but I saw a YouTube, and they were scooping at this event rather than putting it in cups. Now, in states like Oregon, they like a certain ounce size, almost like a single serving. It's going to be the manufacturer's choice other than what they want. Personally, I would do the smaller serving. Side. What in theory, when you talk to a manufacturer of THC infused brownie pastries or something like that, they're going to say, well, everybody's tolerance level is different. It could be 10 milligrams. It could be 100 milligrams. So what we want to do is we want to provide a piece of pastry with the total amount of THC in it. So let's say that there's 200 milligrams of THC in this cupcake the size of a softball. What the manufacturer is guessing is a couple of things. There's more than one person eating this cupcake and everybody has a different portion size. For the manufacturer, the challenge is, is we want something for everybody. And how do you do that? Do you have a cupcake in three different sizes because you need to declare the um, milligrams of THC on the container. Do you make it a small cupcake the size of a golf ball at 10 milligrams? And if I know that I am a 60 gram guy, then am I, the question is, will I pop six of these golf ball size cupcakes in my mouth? And I think the manufacturer is going to say no. So they're going to make a cupcake that's maybe 20 milligrams or 40 milligrams. That's why most of the foods out there that are infused, you see them on the larger side. It's serving multiple purposes, multiple people, and for an individual trying to figure out what their level is. And on top of this whole thing is the type of marijuana that's used. And so now you have different grade levels of this, even though the milligrams are the same, the delivery is different. So it's a real puzzle in trying to figure out the best size package for a THC infused product. Personally, I like the option of small and then, and then people can grab what they want and almost control the situation rather than buying one large and then determining, well, do I eat half the cupcake, a quarter of the cupcake, a tenth of the cupcake? What do I really consume here? It's a manufacturer preference. Is it cost prohibitive to make three different sizes? It's not cost prohibitive. It's just it's just more logistics at the manufacturer. It would be it's a great way to go if you were doing again the cupcake scenario and you had one at ten milligrams, one at twenty or thirty, and one at sixty. Then it gives people the opportunity to say, okay, I'm going to take a large and a small, or because they know they know their tolerance. So again, it's a manufacturer preference. I believe it's a little bit more work. You got to buy three different labels for three different sizes. 
I have to buy three different cup sizes for small, medium, and large. So there is a little bit more expense in the packaging, logistics, because you don't just do it all under one cup and one label. So there is a little bit of cost there. But the question is, if this cupcake is $15, will they come back more often if this cupcake is five dollars smaller cupcake so that is a market study i think it's in the testing right now i don't think anybody knows in the in the normal food chain it's been figured out what product sells at best at what si in what size and in what container but at the end of the day the manufacturer needs to be unique based on their product category needs to have the right size package as well as the correct correct type of package so they can stand out in the case and be something different. So both are important. What I suggest is have a great quality product and the icing on the cake per se is the THC infusion. So let the consumer have an overall great experience, a great tasting cupcake, a great tasting ice cream, and at the same time, get the type of uh, deliverable and THC that they're, that they're used to. I think when you're dealing with a regular consumable product, non-THC, then I think it's very important on understanding who your target customer is, who you want it to be. That will be, that will drive a creative package and, and the, and the, and the right size that will create the sales. With THC sales, until there's more competition, I think it's going to be uh, not as exciting and creative in the packaging. So, you know, for example, when I was in a dispensary, there were these clamshells, plastic per se, clear plastic hinged on one side and they clamp on the front. And then somebody had a label around, you know, with the name of the cupcake and then all the legal information that was needed on the label. The reason they use that is um, because they wanted the consumer to see the product. It displayed very nicely. The packaging in itself was inexpensive. Um, it didn't enhance the sale at all. It didn't sway my the decision at all to buy that. I would say that if there was another piece of pastry from another company displayed next to it in a more creative fashion or with better labeling, it's possible that now I will pull one over the other. Um, clearly, price is an issue too. But if all things being equal, the size of the baked good is the same and uh, the flavor's the same and the price you know, the price point's the same, everything's the same, an attractive package or label could sway me to make the purchase. When Ben & Jerry's came out, they were the first company to come out that was very avant-garde, hippie, all of these colors. People weren't used to it. They were used to a very stuffy type of look, Godiva ice cream, haagen -Dazs, and all your basics. They were one, two, three straight colors. They were very appropriate. Ben and Jerry's comes out and it was a it was a radical graphics. Today they're more celebrity based. They joke. They they make different flavors off of different current events of the uh, of the globe or politicians or comedians or whatever. So that's their shtick. Now people got used to the look. So that's an example of how when you're when the THC business right now, if you were to put out ice cream, there's not a lot of people putting out ice cream or there are not a lot of people putting out sorbets. And if they're doing it, they're they're doing it in a way that is not commercial, not professional looking. So right now you come out with a package that clearly states what's inside. The image represents the, you know, the, um, the responsibility or the professionalism of the company that's making the product. So you may have certain colors that tend to be a little bit on the conservative side. Maybe the font's not as loopy, you know, maybe it's, it's more structured. And we're in a, we're in a, a nice, um, you know, six ounce cup. Now, if there's four or five companies out there selling vanilla ice cream, now one of the companies will step up and say, I need to do something different. I need to put it in a jar. I need to put it in a squeeze tube. I need to do something different that makes me stand out to sell my vanilla THC infused ice cream. That's the evolution. So the long answer to your question is, it's not important right now in THC. It is very important in conventional products.
um, in both what type of packaging and the size. In THC, the size is regulated. Typically, um, it's regulated. You're not gonna you're not gonna be able to sell a quart of vanilla THC infused ice cream. You're gonna be able to sell. I think it's a four, five, or six ounce cup, and then and then you declare your milligrams per that one single serving. So the challenge is is once there's more competition. Gra- do you change your graphics? Do you change your packaging to be more cutting cutting edge? Get back ahead in the race, or or not? So, um, and clearly, if somebody loves your product, they know what to expect. They don't care who's coming out there; they're always going to buy your product because they know it. Okay, that all makes sense. Um, I think that that's enough for this week. I think we've right. got enough um, around the packaging. That was really good information. And I didn't know about the the. I, I mean, it kind of makes sense that the package size should target the consumer, but it's one of those things that's that's intuitive, but that you don't actually think about unless you're doing right. you're in the business it, it is boring but it is a very important factor the again in conventional uh, products the packaging is as important as the flavor that you um, create so they go hand in hand um, okay so I think that's it for this week 